Spartanburg County is home to nearly 300,000 people in the Piedmont of South Carolina. The poverty level stands today at 17%, unemployment at 7%. But seven years ago, those numbers were significantly higher. Still reeling from the collapse of the textile industry, the county was seeking a road to better health, so it took a hard look at the well-being of its citizens. What we found was shocking. We found statistics like 10% of all the people who live in our county have no teeth. We found that over half of the citizens who were using our emergency room were there for non-emergent care. That data is what drove our community to say, we've got to do something. This is unacceptable. Today, we are working collaboratively on building resources in our community and understanding the impact of doing nothing. In building partnerships, one of the odd partnerships that formed was one with the detention center and the United Way and the hospital. And through conversations, we said, what if we looked at the impact of detainees and folks who come to our emergency room? We got to comparing notes and we realized that many of the folks they called patients, we called inmates. So given that, we started uh, to look a little closer. We made a list of names of 20 folks who frequented the jail, provided that to the hospital. They compared those names against those who had frequented the emergency department, and surprisingly enough, we found that that list matched almost name for name. Over half of the individuals in our county who are incarcerated today are there because of mental illness and substance abuse. Crime is a symptom. The cause is deeper than that. It goes either an addiction process, it goes with mental health, there's a lot of different things. If we can change that with them when they're here and they get released, we've served the community. One of our priority areas is access to care. If you're gonna focus on access to care, you have to focus on community outreach. You have to go to where the people are. So we love that our local community health center Regenesis understands how to reach out to the community. They've got a back to school fair that is going to reach over 2,000 children. Not only those children, but their families as well. This is the Point Teen Health Center. So this is the service that we offer for, of course, our teenagers. We um, provide preventive health services for our teens, and basically they come in for birth control services. For years and years in Spartanburg County, we've preached about the importance of abstinence. Five years ago, when we looked at the data, we realized that we had one of the highest teen pregnancy rates in South Carolina. Clearly, preaching abstinence alone was not enough. It's important for our teens to have a, a space, a safe space to come to where they're not, you know, I guess, judged or anything, so that way they're able to avoid making mistakes in, in terms of, you know, you know, contracting STDs, HIV, as well as, you know, just thinking about their risk in getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Do you see any young teen moms? We have many volunteers working throughout the community to provide resources around teen pregnancy. This is a girl I used to know. She's like a year older than me. She just had a baby. And how old is she? 14. How did that affect you? No, I... I I don't think I would be ready for something like that. Through those efforts today, we've reduced our teen pregnancy rates by 48% in just five short years. Working together truly makes a difference. The North Side is a great example of community health improvement because what we know is if you're gonna improve the health of a community, you have to work on all the indicators of health. All right, come on, Justice. You have to address education. Our official mission is to ignite minds and to develop leaders. But when you talk about igniting minds, you're talking about helping children find their voice. You have to address housing. You have to address access to healthy food. My name is Tony Thomas. I'm with the Northside Neighborhood Association president, and I'm also a Northside Voyager. As the Voyagers, one of our main goals was to change the perception of the community, you know, uh, from crime and drug-related activities and, and the problems that go with that 
to a community where they could see that there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of vibrancy in this community that needs to be seen and needs to be shared, you know, because we're a part of the city. You know, we're all a big family here. When the people in the community have a voice and a say in, in the things that affect their lives, they thrive better. You know, it, it creates for a better environment and a better place for everybody. You cannot improve the health of your community if you focus on one issue. Because of all the efforts that we've done in the past five years, we've shaved off almost $40 million off of our health care costs because we're investing in prevention and early intervention. If you simply focus on housing, if you simply focus on employment, you're not going to improve the health of your community. You have to be able to work on all these indicators at the same time. And that's really, to me, what a culture of health is about.